Welcome to As the Story Grows, I'm Brian Patton. Today we welcome Ian Fike from It Prevails to the podcast. Ian has a new band called Unarmed. Unarmed released their debut EP, It's Like That, back in January. A link to the album will be in the show notes. Ian talks about the beginnings of It Prevails, their tenure with Rise Records, the hiatus and comeback, and going a different direction musically with Unarmed. It was great getting to hang out and chat with Ian, and I'm stoked about Unarmed and the music he's making now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's chat. I'm good, man. I'm really good. I had a long day, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it went really well, and I'm stoked to be on your show, man. Yeah, yeah, stoked to I'm have you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's so funny. I like at first glance when I got the promo, I was like, "Oh, cool," and I read "I Prevail," and I was like, "Oh, wait, no, it prevails." <laughs> You know, it's funny about that is uh, we noticed when they kind of came on the scene, this was a long time ago, but uh, It Prevails had already been a band established touring with records out for a, a decade. Yeah. So we we kind of felt, uh, you know, at the, at the, in the beginning, we're kind of just like, oh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like they're, you know, younger band, no big deal. And then as they caught a lot of hype and traction, we're like, oh, shit, you know, yeah. <laughs> it kind of sucks because they, they didn't necessarily like take our glory, but it was so close where it, it did definitely hurt. Yeah, yeah. But I got no ill will against those guys. You know, good for them. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Are you still uh, up in Portland? Yeah, yeah, I live in I live in Portland. That's what, I've that's lived right. here for most of my life, but I did uh, move away for total about 10 years and that was when i was doing uh other bands like uh take shape and uh it prevails was located in denver for some time too oh, wow. that's cool what was uh growing up in portland like it was uh it was great i mean i it, it was a it was a beautiful city especially for uh, people who loved music the yeah. music scene was vibrant and all inclusive and i met some of my dearest friends here and that's kind of what pushed me to create music was the people that were here and then the the scene itself was just incredible at the time we had uh just like 10 venues that we could frequent play shows at go to shows every weekend every every you know weekly and it was abundant to say the least (laughs) So at, growing up and it was, I look back on it now and we're just like, <laughs> we didn't know what we had. Right, you know, right. It's still a great city for music, but it was something, something very special when I was growing up. Yeah, yeah. And I am imagine it was similar up there. Like the scene was probably way different and way more like smaller and, and felt more localized, especially when you're young, everything feels super small right Right. yeah your perspective is different yeah but um you know we had so many touring acts coming through and um every band i i I mean seriously every band i wanted to see what it seemed like they come through every few months it was it was epic Nice. nice and you know we on top of that my bands got to play with them yeah that was even better you know right yeah it was it made it even cooler that's awesome. That's awesome. What uh, what initially got you into music? Um, I mean, I always loved music growing up. I had a guitar from the age of about 10. And then uh, my older sister, Ashley, and her friends kind of sparked me. She's four years older than me. So they kind of got into the alternative music and, you know, underground, um, so to speak. And... You know, it just kind of blossomed from there. 
she was uh, married to a man named Kyle who was in this band called Caddisfly for years. They were on Fearless. Yep. And they had a house in um, basically like the southwest side of port town. And they'd have these parties and throw shows. And I remember rolling in there at like 14 years old because <laughs> I wanted to watch them play. And my sister was like, oh, I guess you could come over for a little <laughs> while. And um, at that house, I had met um, my buddy Alex, who helped me found uh, It Prevails, and Tony, Mo uh, we call him Tony Mosh. But Tony Tataje, he was a, uh, he's a, uh, the kind of the main dude for American me. And those were kind of like my guys who I uh, might break out people that helped me, um, just get into shows, going to shows and, uh, you know, showing me bands and, you know, they kind of just shaped my, yeah, my, my whole experience on music. Yeah. And we yeah. started a band too. So it was, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Was there one like genre or band that like stood out to you that was like the thing that captured your attention immediately or? Yeah. I mean, anybody who listens to It Prevails won't be surprised by this, but uh, early melodic hardcore, like uh, Shy Halud, Strong Arm, uh, and then the stuff like uh, Strike Anywhere, Hot Water Music, the more really melodic kind of punk stuff really stood out to me so that was those are the bands i clung on to and they were the bands that i i tried to mimic yeah at the time and you know and i had a lot of friends around me that wanted to do the same thing so that helped a lot too you know yeah yeah it's cool that like that florida hardcore stuff like migrated up that's shy yes. and, Arm and like and and hot water <laughs> yeah yeah hot water yeah 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 strong arm and shy Halloween. you never hear I mean, not never, but you rarely hear them not mentioned together as this package deal. Well, yeah, especially at the time, you know. And then, you know, I loved Burn. And, you know, there was a handful of bands yeah. that were just very influential on what we were trying to do at the time. Yeah, yeah. Because you were in Portland and the music scene was so expansive, it was easy to just like, okay, these are my friends who like this similar thing and start bands. <laughs> Yeah, and you know Alex, like who I mentioned before, he's he was kind of the older brother in the band. Um, he was from Philly, so he grew up, you know, four years earlier than me in Philly, and got to see a ton of cool bands. So it it it, it helped me a lot, kind of yeah. boost me into the into the realm that I wanted to be in, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Were you always drawn? drawn to vocals i know you play guitar now too but right right yeah i play bass now in in unarmed bass, yeah. but uh i initially when we started the band it prevails i was playing guitar and i always loved guitar mm -hmm. but um it kind of went like this basically when we went to record our first ep um tony was kind of not feeling it and then Alex was like, well, you're the best guy we know that at vocals. <laughs> so now, now you have to do that, <laughs> whether you want to or not. So uh, I did. And I was drawn to it initially. You know, I, I do enjoy it. Yeah. I do enjoy performing as the vocalist. It makes things a little, you know, it, on one hand, it's, it's simpler because I'm not trying to play music and sing yeah. it. And then on the other hand, it, it's more difficult with, with it prevails because of just the, the the huge you know wide array of vocals i was trying to do when i was younger it was a lot easier right <laughs> i'll put it that way you know, being 35 now it's it, it's not as simple as it was when i was 18 yeah <laughs> yeah i remember but I, I do like it though yeah 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 i remember like yeah screaming used to be easy and now it's just like i can't yeah, scream I, the same way anymore it's it's yeah, it's like my range isn't quite what it used to be. And, and I think if you listen back on the It Prevails records, like you could tell that I had a much bigger range in my yeah. in the first two records as far as the screams go. And then gradually my singing got better and my sing my screaming kind of just like stagnated, which I wanted it to sound like that, but yeah. I did, didn't have the freedom. And if I wanted it to try it now, <laughs> right. Know, like I, it prevails did a EP in 2019 and 
I'm proud of it, but it was uh it was more difficult to get the sound <laughs> I wanted out of my voice. <laughs> yeah. Not to say yeah. I won't do I won't try it again, but I, with unarmed it's it's a lot more fun for me. Yeah. Yeah. Could you always sing as well? I I mean, I wasn't quite as good at it. <laughs> I I loved I've always loved singing, so it was something I wanted to do. Yeah. And all the bands I liked were doing it for the most part. So I kind of like just practice, practice, practice. And you could definitely tell, uh, you know, find a disconnect from the early at Prevail stuff to the latest unarmed EP. Yeah. And then everything in between, I feel like there's been a constant progression. Yeah. And uh, I guess that just comes with age and experience, yeah. you know. But yeah. I, I, I want, I, if you had asked me when I was 17 if I could sing, I would have said, hell yeah. <laughs> right. But if I look if I look at it now and if you ask me if I could sing in 17, no, I was terrible at singing. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Did you take uh lessons at any point to try to help or just like repetition and practice? It was mostly just repetition and practice and by God, we toured from age, you know, when I was 17 till 25 yeah. solid, you know, as much as we possibly could. And that was the best you know practice i could get was touring and putting out records and trying to make them sound different and better but uh i did have a few sessions with a guy named chris ruff he was the singer of that band caddisfly he's very 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 good at singing so i took every uh every lesson i could get from him and, and kind of held it to heart and it definitely helped me as far as the clean vocals go At the time we were struggling to find a name we had this music already and we didn't have a name we just kind of had our crew of guys and then yeah i believe it was alex our older brother in the band kind of said you know what, let's let's just he we were throwing out names and that was something we liked and the question came up like oh what does it mean and it's just kind of like well, you know it's ambiguous right and we that's that was kind of where we went with it and it was a hit. Everybody liked it. You know, all our friends and all our fans were like, that's a cool name. You know, it's different. It's, it's two smaller words. And we enjoyed it. it and it fit the, fit the you know, kind of the message. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. far as lyrically and, and sound. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you guys get connected with Rise Records? Well, Rise is a local label to hear. They were. Um I was in a band when I was 16 <laughs> called Ever We Fall, and they were on Rise. I was uh, playing bass. I was in high school when I joined the band, and they were seniors in my high school, and I was a sophomore, and they said, well, hey, we heard you like music. How about you come try out? And I loved emo. I loved anything like that. Sunny Day Real Estate. Uh the further seems forever stuff was my jam. And so I was like, you know what? I'll just get trapped for this band. And they're like, Oh yeah, we're putting out an EP on rise and we're touring all summer. Yeah. And you do it. And I'm like, well, I got to ask my parents <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I did and they let me. So, um, they were already on rise. So when I just, they went further on and I wanted to do the upper bills thing. Yeah. So I still had Craig, who was the owner of Rise at the time, in my back pocket. And I just said, hey, check out these two demos or these four songs we did on our own little like self-released EP. And Craig was like, hey, if you do a full length, let me know. And I'd love to put it out. So that was basically what we did. We, we demoed a bunch more songs, sent them to Craig. 
and he was like, let's do it. Let's put out a full length and, uh, you know, get you guys on the road. So that's entirely what we did at a young that's age. Right. Yeah, that's rad. Just that, like, kind of handshake, one album deal. No, initially it was two, and it was a, it was like their, his option for the second. Okay. And uh, I love Craig. Like, we're still friends now, and, you know, he's always told me, like, well, you, you know, you're one of my favorite musicians ever, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> but um at the time when i sent him demos from capture and embrace which is the second it reveals record he was not feeling it mm -hmm. he was like yeah this shit kind of sucks start over <laughs> oh man and we and we were young and like you know at least we had enough angst in us where we're like no nah, we're gonna we're gonna stick with this sound we like it yeah. So and we did. We went and pushed it, and we thought it went over pretty well. In fact, most yeah. people will tell you it's probably their favorite record. Yeah, yeah. Was it? Do you think that's just the nature of like where Rise Records was at that time with all like yes, bands yes, like yes, Attack Attack and Devil Wears Prada you know, and all that like and metalcore, crazycore stuff blowing up. Right, and it was like you know there was two hands to that, so it was like there was all that stuff, and then. He was signing bands like Recon and American Me. And mm -hmm. so he wanted us to fit in like the heavier version of the label. Yeah. Even though we were like, oh, geez. <laughs> and we're like, why can't we have a little more freedom? And yeah. he was like, no, you know, I want you to kind of stick to the only heavy vocals, no cleans. And uh, put out put out another record like in line with what you've been doing. And we were mm -hmm. just kind of like, well, that's not something we're we're willing to do at this point because we had, I, seriously, we had like ten or twelve songs that we were like pretty pumped on. Yeah. So starting over, changing the format wasn't really an option for us. Yeah. Yeah. Was it tough after that to try to find footing? I mean, you had some like smaller labels you worked with until you guys get to Media Scare. Yeah, we just we just put out that second full length with our buddy Ryan, who's recorded. Um, he did the last It Prevails EP. He did uh, the the newest Unarm EP. He produced it. He's just been a homie. He was in that band Ever We Fall I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So I've been friends with that guy since I was 16 years old. And he lives nearby us. And he kind of, we've always vibed musically. So he gives it to me straight if he doesn't like it. Or, you know, when, when Unarmed went to record these songs, he was just, it's so natural, dude. And if you yeah. watch the footage from like our the last Zipper Bills EP, there was a whole series of like, you know, we were in the studio with him and it speaks for itself. You know, it's just it's fun. We're joking around most of the time, but when it's time to get serious, it's it's all there and we get a very solid result as we go. <laughs> we we feel like it's with the Ipperville stuff, it always progressed in the right direction. And then with the unarmed stuff, it's gonna continue to do that. And we, we do plan to continue to record with him too. With the hiatus, was it just like losing members and trying to keep the band going, like, and just like, <clears throat> I mean, or wears you down the older you get, and so like, if you if you don't reach a certain level, if you're just like, uh, we gotta recalibrate and rethink this thing. Oh man, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a, a lot of what you just said. There's there's so many variables, but <laughs> you touched you touched on some key points, you know. Realistically, it seemed like whenever we caught traction and we had these insane tours lined up, which we did, uh, members would quit a month beforehand and we couldn't fill the spot, so we'd have to cancel. Mm. Um, or we'd get on, we'd be on tour well, on a very good tour, and a member would quit. You know, it 
tour we weren't making any money as as most people will tell you it was paying right. for itself mostly but even still like our phone bills and stuff weren't getting covered so it was difficult for most guys at you know early adulthood to say i want to stick with this although every band or every member that was in our band loved the music especially if they were part of recording one of the records it still seemed like uh we couldn't hang on to them or at least the best ones for very long so it kind of yeah. it, it always seemed to happen at the worst yeah. time where we'd have to change members or or find new ones in order to continue on these tours like we had a tour lined up with life in your way and means we had a tour lined up with unholy and you know i mean it was just all these tours at the time that we always had to keep canceling on and our booking agents would get so fed up with us yeah and you know on top of that we were a bunch of kids man we were just getting fucking stoned and drunk all the time <laughs> and it was uh you know there was there was many times where we could have better sp better spend our time and, and energy yeah but we were late teens early adulthood and we wanted to play the music we loved which we did but it always seemed like we could have we could have done a little bit better had we put the more energy into it and or tried better to keep members around. Yeah. Yeah. What led to you guys doing the EP in 19? Well, Dave Catuccio, good friend of mine. He was playing drums in Take Shape, that band I did in Denver. We did an EP in a, in a full length, which was more laid back kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, more spacey rock kind of driving stuff we have a record out called weightlessness that came out in uh, 18 um he had always wanted to play in it prevails and he had filled in for us a few shows like he did a show with us in 2015 and then he did a show with us in 20 i think 17 as it prevails just kind of like you know one-offs mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, man, I really want to do an EP or, or full length with, with you under the It Prevails moniker. And we are like, yeah. You know, I was thinking, I've got a few songs under the belt that I've been kind of wishing were It Prevails songs. Like uh, the song Gift of Clarity. Like those riffs I had forever. Yeah. Um, and Lair Hill, I had those riffs for a long, long time. So Theron, who plays in Unarmed, was also down to do it. So it was kind of just this whole vibe where we're like, well, we're all wanting to do it. Let's just do it. So we went in, we, we practiced like two days, got four songs together and went and tracked them the, the next week. It was very natural and very, very fun. We wrote it as a band as opposed yeah. to me. I mean, I had a skeleton in mind. I had riffs. And usually at the It Prevails stuff, I was always playing guitar, at least just for ideas. But um, for that EP, it was me, Theron, Dave, and, and we just kind of we just kind of wrote it all together. That's right. Yeah, that EP is. Uh, yeah, I like that EP a lot. It's really cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys have plans after that for 2020 that the pandemic screwed up? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, we were gonna do a. Uh, we were planning on doing a Stroma, 10 year reunion, show. Because we love that record. I mean, we, I mean, we were going to postpone it, but it was going to be, you know, it was going to be at the 2011 Stroma 10 year. Yeah. And we, we even at the the two shows we played for the EP, or we, we did a string of shows really for the 
for you know a life worth living we were practicing stroma songs uh, uh, you know attempting to yeah. put one together and do the album front to back like we did yeah. capture and embrace so it was something we had in mind it was something we were going to do and every time we thought about it it seemed like it would get shut down we had venues lined up we had shows lined up and it, it just never happened because mm. of the pandemic Man. and unfortunately because i love that record and we all do it was kind of our band favorite yeah and it just kind of got squashed out. Not to say it won't happen in the future, but maybe a 15 year or something. Yeah. 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 That would be cool. Well, let's, let's talk about this new project unarmed. Uh, what was the Genesis for this? Well, um, you know, I haven't put out music in a while and it's kind of <laughs> always been this thing where I have to, <laughs> have to scratch my itch and me and Aaron, uh, Aaron was always the original drummer for it prevails. And we and he did countless tours with us, and we we he's written ninety percent of the it prevails stuff. He even did uh, the Perdition record with me remotely, and uh, we did have some falling outs here and there. He always he always seemed to be one of those guys that wanted to quit on the road and go yeah. back home. He'd get sick of the no money, you <laughs> know, no food thing. Yeah, like you know, understandably. Yeah, and. Um, but we did rekindle our friendship and he was like, Hey, let's jam. So we started jamming in his basement like two and a half years ago. And we've always loved that, you know, faster punk stuff. I mean, it's pretty akin to the April stuff. It's just no screaming really. Right. Yeah. So we wrote some songs and then Theron had moved back from Houston. Theron, was taking care of his mom out in Houston and he finally moved back to Portland and then Brian Blade who played in American Me and It Prevails in the early times had moved back from Hawaii so we were all finally in the same place again after so many years apart yeah and we all love that kind of music we all love like I was telling you before the melodic punk stuff yeah so <clears throat> We just said, you know what? Screw it. Let's go record an EP, and let's let's call it something new because it sounds totally different yeah. to us. And that's that's kind of where it, it it happened because we were all finally in the same place again. Where'd the name come from, Unarmed? Initially, I mean, it's not really like, a, obviously, it's not a literal thing. It, sure. It's just kind of something that was like, Theron brought it up. We had another name in mind, and we actually had artwork like with the other name. And um, we were just kind of like, well, maybe it'll be, it'll be cool. And like two weeks before we were going to post that first single and teasers for artwork. And we had already actually recorded a video too, the video for, you know, home. Yeah. We were like, let's change the name. <laughs> and it, it, it was, it was a, I'm glad we did. Yeah. Not to say I didn't like the original name, but this one just fits better for what we were going for and the lyrical content and yeah. the overall image and the future. We have a we have an idea of what we want to put out in the future too. So it was kind of just like, oh, that's a cool name. There was no bands really with it. There was like a band from Japan, <laughs> bunch of bunch of teeny boppers, and they put out like two songs. And we're like. <laughs> Sorry, we're gonna have to steamroll you guys. <laughs> and <laughs> not that I am not taking away from those guys on our yeah, yeah. Japan, but uh, the other the other name we were going with was gonna be um, a band that had been established years ago, but they've disbanded. Okay. So we didn't want to like push on their shit. 
it's hard to find names now, man. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> that haven't been totally, you know, used up. So many, yeah, so many things are taken. I, I always keep a list. If I hear something or like yeah. read something, I just have a note list on my phone that I'm just like, that's a good band name. Just like sell them to people. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's, yeah. I mean, I've done that too. Like I did a guest song on this for this band from the Midwest called Chapter. They put out one, e one full length. But I, I gave them that name and now I'm thinking, <laughs> man, I should have kept that. Fucking yeah, yeah. That thing's sick, dude. Yeah. and that record was great so I'm, I'm glad i went to a cool band yeah and chris and dan you know i love you guys but <laughs> chapter was my name nice. <laughs> the ep is called it's like that do you shift your lyrical approach for this band yes uh, i i find that the older i get the harder it is to write vocals because i'm such a more picky person you know, of course, your mm -hmm. tastes change and you get older and you don't really. It just comes off a little less natural for me to like just punch out words. Like when I would record it for Bills, like, man, I could I could wake up in the morning of recording an album and just write a song like yeah. lyrics or two, two songs like that morning and then go track them. And now I can't do that. Like I, I obsess over it. I want to have like a like a theme. Or, a, you know, like a total plot. Mm -hmm. But for this EP in particular, there was a overall vibe. Like, you know, it's a nostalgic EP. It's about, like, my young adulthood or young, child, like, late childhood, like, teen years, skateboarding, and uh, growing up with a, my younger brother and our group of friends. And basically just getting into trouble you know getting you know having crushes falling in love it's more of like a story storytelling ep and lyrical content as opposed to like altruistic and uh, ideas you know like it prevails just always seemed to be like you know like uplifting altruistic mm. like things that we should do as a human collective yeah and uh, you know a little more vague and as I always say, like uh, the shit you could put on the back of a shirt, you know, right? Right? Like you know, remember all those like you know mid two thousands band? There was like a lyric on the back of a shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a bunch of those for it prevails, but just for this one, I'm, someone just aged out. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You remember, dude? Every band, every band uh, caught oh, yeah. that. Yeah. But for this band, it was more like let's. I want. I want to tell a story here. I want to. Uh, I, I want to. I want to. I want to write some music mm -hmm. that's that's how i looked at it like i'm not going to do it like i did for the last 15 years i want to yeah. i'm going to try to write some songs that that are all congruent to one another that's cool that's cool you want to share the theme for the cb <laughs> yeah i mean it's like uh it's totally just about my late teens early teens skateboarding getting into trouble destroying public property falling in love and making out with chicks um, pissing off my parents and um, needing the love of my life, you know, at the time. Yeah. I didn't know it at the time, but uh, that's what happened because I ended up marrying her years later. Nice. And I, you know, I, I took it all for granted because, you know, youth will do that to you. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Do you think, like, I, I asked this question of someone else last year, like, do you think that that style of music just lends itself to lyrics of that nature? You know, that's a good point. And yes, I would. <laughs> um, you know, it's no, it's no secret that I love the band living with lions. I think you can tell if you listen to it, you know, unarmed mm -hmm. and even some it prevails songs. Like I love that band. I've loved everything they ever put out. And they've always been that band that kind of like can write a song about either chicks love or like, hanging out with the boys or doing something like that, or even just, you know, the more altruistic stuff. So I always yeah. kind of like, was like, man, I want to write stuff like that. Like how I can, I can kind of bounce back and forth between just an idea of something or like a vague thing. And then into, you know, memories and, and, yeah. and the love or, you know, I've never written a love song prior to this EP. And then it's like that, that just made sense. And uh, 
that was the first love song I ever wrote, man. Every other song I've released, you know, 60 plus songs prior to that. And that was it. That was the first one. What's, uh, what's this year look like for Unarmed? Are you guys just going to be a studio band releasing EPs or a full length or you have touring plans? Yeah, uh, we're probably not going to be touring. If we do, it'll just be our West Coast uh, run. You know, we're all Darren's from Sacramento. Uh, Brian and I have toured and Aaron have toured up and down the West Coast countless times. We still have tons of friends, but uh, we have two shows coming up. We have a show here in the, at the end of the month. Um, it's actually sold out at our one of our local um, theaters. It's just because we're opening for some bands, <laughs> <laughs> but we're stoked. And then we're playing a show in March. We're just gonna try to keep it, you know, monthly as yeah. best we can to kind of support this EP. Uh, we haven't released music, you know, in a long time, so yeah, we are stoked to keep putting out music. But as far as touring probably not we all have lives and we're older now but yeah we have been working on a full length yeah we have probably four or five songs in the works and like i was telling you we have ryan furlot in our back pocket and we plan to record with him we have or we have two demos already just fleshed out with him and you know many more on the way for the for the full length nice nice yeah it's like the benefit of of the era we live in where you know, you don't have to worry about record labels. You don't have to worry about CD sales yeah. or vinyl or cassette. If you don't want to, you just put it up on Bandcamp or Spotify and just like yeah. release at your own pace and, you know, not worry about touring and recouping the money. Exactly. And it's like, man, I, I hear my buddies who are still touring and, you know, big, big bands as far as I, as far as I'm concerned. And they're like, man, we're, we still can barely make enough to, yeah consider even trying this again in, in three months so as much as i do miss touring i love it i love the connection with people being around like-minded people performing in front of people that want to hear it and see it you know as far as as that goes it's kind of just a dream to me now but i do love playing shows and yeah. like i said any any um festival opportunity that unarmed could get or it prevails we consider playing we would be all over that yeah. but we are focusing on unarmed and we are confident in what we're doing and we love the music we love the idea you know all our music that we're going to be recording here soon we're just pumped to get out here and and, and be putting out music again you know i think it, it kind of took everybody by surprise that we were even trying to do something like this again yeah. so we're just happy to do it yeah you know so, so some people you, you have that bug and that itch and it never goes away and you just Got to find yeah. a way to get, get something out there. I don't think I'll ever stop. Yeah. You know, it's such a good release and it's such a good use of energy, I feel, you know, in life. Yeah. It's like there's so many different negative shit that people can focus on and and be about. And music has always been this thing where I always feel better after I do it. And I yeah. always feel more proud of my, of my, of what I put into it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Any like records, TV shows, movies you've been digging mm. recently? Man, I I love uh, the band Acres from the UK. They're about to put out a new full length. It's just fucking amazing. Yeah, I so, love. Yeah, yeah, I was ahead. listening to your EP earlier, and then mm -hmm. it ended, and it popped the Acre stuff on, and I was like, No Hold shit, up, who's this band? And I was like, Okay, <laughs> I, I love this now. Like the Spotify yeah. algorithm worked. I was like, Oh, they're dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's funny i was looking through our like uh people that like us like like acres i'm like fuck yeah i love that band and um you know i'm stoked on that full length coming out um i love 
like the more modern, like kind of, I hate to say it, but like Genty metalcore. Yeah. Like I'm really stoked on the invent animate stuff. Yeah, it's so good. Um, it is good. Yeah. And then, you know, I saw you, uh, you know, you, you, you interviewed that guy from, uh, Aviana. I love Aviana. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love that kind of style of stuff. I mean, my, my taste goes all over too. I love John Moreland, like, uh, you know, the more like country driven singers, songwriter stuff. Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, I just kind of, I dive deep into whoever's putting out stuff, man. And my, my tastes are all over, but yeah. there are some records I'm really looking forward to this year for sure. You know, uh, I love rising insane. I'm going to, I don't know if you've interviewed those guys or listened to no. those guys. They're really good. They they put out a full length last year. It was incredible. And they have a single that just dropped. That's really good. They're from Germany. I'm going to shout out my boys Mayfield from uh, Ontario, Canada. Patty, you're my boy. And I did a song with them last year, but they are incredible. Um, yeah, as far as just listening, I mean... I'm always popping on Dayseeker or Polaris or Dayseeker is really good. Yeah. I mean my my tastes all over the place really. Yeah. Thanks for listening to As the Story Grows. Our intro music was written and composed by Jeremy Hunt. The As the Story Grows theme is by Bob Nana. If you like what you hear, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and give us a rating and review. If you'd like to support the show financially, you can join us at patreon.com slash as the story grows. Be a part of our community and join the ongoing conversation over on Discord. If you enjoy this episode, share it on social media with your friends. Much appreciated, and thanks for listening. I never felt so young and alive as when I'm diving into a tomb. And now I'm learning as I listen along, and the wheels are turning, and I started a song. One good word, and I'm gone. Thank you.